The art of Fallout 4 has images from various stages of the design process, but most of it is finalized concept art. There's also some commentary from the developers about why they designed things the way that they did. Overall, this is a good video game art book. This review will cover the quality of the physical book itself, the content of the book, the aesthetics, and the nostalgia evoked by the book. I'll also talk about how it provides insight into the game's development. Let's start with the quality of the physical book. While it's 9 inches wide and 12 inches high, it has 368 pages, which is pretty thick by video game art book standards. The book has a nice heft to it, and uh, the hardcover is pretty decent, even though mine's ripped, and the pages are pretty thick, and the printing quality is pretty good. So overall, the quality of the physical book's pretty good. All right, on to the content of the book, starting with how much image variety there is. The artwork ranges from pre-production sketches all the way to final 3D models that are used in the game. Some of the images show descriptive notes, but that's not very common. The vast majority of the images are finalized concept art. I imagine the volume of material is so great that they couldn't include iterative artwork for very much, but it would have been nice to see a bit more than there is. There's occasionally more than average concept and iteration art for some random particular concept, like the heavy raider armor or a car. There's some very rough sketches. It's kind of like a brainstorm session where they're not spending too much time on any particular idea. This page shows weapon mod variation designs. There's some storyboards. I thought these weather palette pages were pretty cool. And I thought these pages with the pre-war clothing next to the post-war sketches were pretty funny. Even though most of the book is finalized concept art, you can still get a sense that a lot of work went into finalizing the designs. Huh? There aren't really any organizational issues. Uh, the chapters of the book are pre-production, world, which is like landscapes, characters, creatures, weapons, vehicles, which is not many, set dressing, and illustration, which is like the magazines you can find. Is there any writing from the developers? Well, as near as I can tell, almost all of the writing in the book is from the development staff. It's direct and descriptive, and it's mostly found at the start of the chapters to give a generalized overview of how they made their design choices. For example, at the start of the weapon section, it says that they needed to create all the weapons in a modular fashion to accommodate for the weapon modification system. It also discusses the challenges that that posed to the design team. All right, does this book have what you want it to have? Well, it's like the book version of a Bethesda game in that there's just so much content. I mean, there isn't much iterative art or rough sketches, but I can't really think of anything from the game that isn't in the book. Here's a small sampling. This page shows how they made the power armor bulkier than in the past games because they wanted the character model to actually fit inside of it, and it needed to have a frame for interchangeable parts. There's a section of things that didn't make it into the final game, like this giant squirrel, these giant bats, and this mutant deathclaw. Here's an absurdly detailed view of the inside of a Protectron. I really like seeing all the magazine covers together, as well as the other props. My personal favorite magazine cover is Blood on the Harp. <laughs> it's just so stupid and perfect. Incidentally, the artist said that the real reference materials they looked at from the 1950s were even more absurd than what they created for the game. Still on the topic of what I would want to be in this book, I personally would have liked it if there was more focus on the monsters in the game. I mean, they're treated equally to everything else, but I think they're a real highlight of playing Fallout 4. So this isn't a significant infraction. Well, anyway, I think that overall the content on offer is pretty darn good. On to the aesthetics. Does the book have a pleasant layout? I think so. I mean, there's nothing jarring. I like that for the most part the images are shown off rather than placed in tiny little boxes like in some other art books. There are a lot of full pages of art, and a lot of them are quite nice and impressive. As for the quality of the art, I mean, that's obviously up to personal taste, but I quite like most of the art in the book, 
especially the illustrations chapter. Are there any weird issues with the book? Well, on page 190, there is an absolutely inexcusable mid-sentence double space. Sinful. Well, apart from that atrocity, I think the aesthetics are pretty good. As for the nostalgia, even the chapter headings make me nostalgic. It's very cohesively fallout. Even little images reminded me of random places I recall visiting in the game. I think both the size and quality of the images do more than the average art book to evoke memories from the game. Does the book reveal things about the game's development? Well, I thought there were a lot of interesting passages that provided insight into the art design and that gave me an increased appreciation for what it takes to make a video game. Like here it talks about the challenge of creating a vault suit that doesn't look goofy, and how they did it. Here the developers talk about the challenge of finding the right color palette for the game. They wanted one that imbued a sense of moving forward and hope, rather than just despair. In some parts of the book it talked about how the gameplay can influence the art design. For example, it mentions how the vertebrate needed to be bulky to accommodate power-armored troops actually going inside of it. The section on landscapes gave me an increased appreciation of just how many little landscape features need to be thought of ahead of time. What would a clearing in the woods look like? A stream? A street? The sheer amount of environmental details that needed to be created from scratch is staggering. Not to mention all the random little props. Well, apparently this is an unpopular opinion these days, but I quite liked Fallout 4. And I quite liked this book. Different people want different things in video game art books, but I hope this review has been helpful in showing you what you can expect from this book. If for some strange reason you have any complaints about this book, or you want to tell me how much you hate Fallout 4, uh, please, please feel free to contact my customer support center.